had a, an interesting encounter with um, it was a comedian from the 80s named Sam Kinison, who's no longer with us. And Sam was, uh, he was known for his style of screaming comedy. And he was a heavy metal guitar player also and did some music videos. And so it was Sam and uh, David Bowie and um, uh, Ozzy Osbourne. And so Ozzy is telling a story and we're trying to figure out what he's saying and then Sam starts screaming, what in the world are you talking about? I can't understand a word you're saying. And, uh, and Bowie, he, so he turns to Bowie and he says, what did he say? And he says, who's English, you know? And so that was the problem, but it wasn't. <laughs> David said, you know, I've never been able to understand a word that he said. I've been up here about 12 years now. Um, I was living in Ojai in Southern California and worked in Los Angeles for 25 years. So I had a long commute for a good portion of that career. And um, my ex-wife and her husband bought land up here and my son came up with them. He was 14 at the time. So I wanted to be present. I had just retired and I was concentrating mostly on painting and writing at that point. In uh, high school, it was mostly poetry, um, and I studied a lot of different poets at that time and began to publish in school magazines and things like that. Um, I didn't really start doing long form until I was into my 20s, I think, mostly short stories at that point. Uh, when I graduated college and, and came to Los Angeles to work in TV and film, um, I, my goal was really to primarily write. So I did a lot of spec scripts in the beginning um, for mostly sitcoms, because uh, that's what I was working on as an editor primarily, a lot of multi-camera stuff. And then I started to do a couple of feature scripts and then I did a, a script for Paramount with um, a writing partner. Um, we sold that to Paramount. It was never produced, but we did sell it. And um, about 10 years before I retired, I started working on my first novel. Uh, after years of peddling scripts around town, um, I decided that I wanted to write for myself. I would get away from the formulaic writing of, of sitcoms and, and film. And um, I had always wanted to do a novel, so I finally started. And it took me a good 10 years to finish it because my hours were so long. My first show um, was um, when Disney, the Disney Channel first started, so we're talking early 80s, and um, there were two shows, when the channel first launched, there were two original programs. Um, it was our show, Wish Upon a Star, and uh, it was a mouser size or something like that. <laughs> I think it was, yeah. So I started as a, a runner, I was hired as a PA, and um, I was, at that point I was, 31, so I was actually a year older than the producer on the show, as well as everyone else in the office. You know, so it, got a, it was a little difficult at first, you know, having to get coffee and run errands and stuff, go out and get lunch for all these people that were younger, <laughs> but had more experience than I did in, in the business. Um, I had done a lot of editing in college, so I aligned myself with the post-production department and I talked to everybody who, in every aspect of that company. And I just really clicked with the editors and I, I liked their process. I liked the fact that they worked all the time. It can be very seasonal in TV, especially TV. I cut promos initially and wraparounds and then uh, started doing, then they put me in sweetening you know, to supervise all the sweetening sessions and then the supervise the online editing. And then by the end of that show, I had, um, I, I started editing segments. It was a field show, so it was um, very edit heavy. And I just stuck with that, did magazine shows for the first couple, three years, and then got into my, doing my first sitcom work. And then I just stayed with sitcoms for a long time. Um, and occasionally, a, you know, a low-budget film would come my way. 
Did a lot of multi-camera stuff, a lot of music, a lot of um, variety shows, um, sitcoms. Um, did the Academy Awards uh, two years. Uh, did a couple of big network specials, things like that. The Muppets, which was probably my favorite gig ever. <laughs> the wonderful thing about the Muppets is that it was everybody loved the Muppets so much that it, it drew on such a um, incredible um, group of artists, you know, um, talent that would show up to do the shows. Um, um, we had uh, we, one of our shows with, uh, was with Martin Short, and Martin came in to to editing just to see what was going on. He was he was actually there doing another special with um, Eugene Levy, who was who had, was director and he was in the editing with him in another bay. Martin came in, and he, Martin is brilliant. And Martin has a very short attention span, and about he was there for maybe 15 minutes, and then he started to do his routine. And so for the next hour, I got to watch Martin just do all this shtick about his T-shirt, wearing his T-shirt over his head, pulling it down over his knees, jumping around, hopping around laughing, rolling on the floor. So it was, that was kind of fun. I think one of the best experiences as an editor that I had, as far as comedy goes, was working with Norman Lear and uh, a sitcom that he was doing in the um, early 90s. You know, he, he sat in editing, editing with me a lot. I mean, I would have the first cut. Editor had first cut on almost every sitcom. Um, then you'd usually want to two more passes. You did a, a pass with the director and a pass with the line producer and or executive producer. Sometimes they were one and the same. <clears throat> At the first cut, you don't really worry so much about the time, the running time of the show. You know, and, and when you're doing network television, it's a very finite window. It's very strict rules about, you know, to the frame of when you have to get to black for commercials and the sh total running time of the show and what have you. But um, it was very simple, a, a simple little thing that Norman said one day in editing. Um, he said, after a joke, he said, L say out loud to yourself, ha, ha, ha. And really? <laughs> I thought he was kidding at first. So I, we did the setup, boom, 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 delivered the punchline. I went, he says, no, out loud, say it out loud. Ha uh, ha ha! Cut, and then played it back, and it made complete sense to me at that point because what happens in a lot of comedy shows is that you don't leave enough room for the laugh. So if you don't leave enough room for the laugh, you're you're laughing and you're stepping over the next incoming line, and especially with sitcoms, <clears throat> which is really a one-two-three setup. If you're laughing over the setup, you're not going to get the full joke. You're not going to get the full impact of the joke. I'm going to come here and make a wonderful new film using all this talent and all the facility and all everything that's here at my beck and call and everyone's going to be involved and we're going to have a great time. Mm -hmm.